Hey all board gamers, here we will find everything solo tabletop gaming and more. Thank you for joining me. This is the show for month of April 2019. What I've been playing, what I've been up to, lots of news, lots of stuff to talk about. We better get started. Yeah. All right, so it is, I have so much to cover and I'm realizing it's a little dark around here, so I apologize. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't have time to fix it. I got to go through this like at Mach 4. It's May 4th, by the way. May the 4th be with you, all you Star Wars people. I don't even have a good Star Wars solo game. If you have any ideas, let me know. And also, I wanted to apologize. I said that I'd come out with a, a video about, you know, being around for a year. And, uh, and I never got to it. You know, probably most of you don't care. But... The biggest thing about that that I wanted to do was was to express my appreciation and, and gratitude for for all of you and for hanging out with me while I do this. This is my favorite thing to do on the channel and everything's kind of starting to really revolve around this. And so I wanted to do a giveaway of sorts. Hang in there with me till the end. You'll see what it's about. It's not traditional. Um, you'll see. But until we get into all that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. And that is what I've been playing. This entire month of April, it's May 4th too, by the way, and I played two games. That's how crazy it's been and why I'm running late getting the show out. But I played a total of 14 different games, 67 plays in total. And I kind of, I thought I'd separate it out a little bit because there's kind of games that, that play really quick or that I'm playing that you could constantly play with family that I always bring up. So I'm just going to bust through those. That is uh, played Pinochle four times. It's, it's a weekly thing for me. Uno, nine times. And if you are like, you know, thinking, why do you keep playing Uno? Well, they kind of make me. Two, when you play Uno, play seven and O's which is basically whenever you play a seven, you get to swap hands with anybody. And if anybody plays an O, a zero, <clears throat> wherever, whichever direction you're playing in, you all pass your hands that direction. It actually makes the game terrifically fun. So seven or no's, Uno played it nine times. Uh, Illusion, played a, a game called Illusion, The Mind, um, played that once too. Only once this time, The Mind. But Illusion is uh, the same creator of The Mind, and it is, is you know, almost as simple to learn. Secret Hitler did a family get-together here for April and got together uh, with, with my folks and um, introduced them to Secret Hitler, played two games of that. That is fun. That's sort of a, that's a big-time bluffing party game. And after they got over the name of it, then we, <laughs> we got a couple good plays of that in. Codenames, play that. That's, you know, kind of becoming a modern classic now. And uh, Vlada Shavatel, I just wish he would put out a real game. For, I mean, no, Codenames is a real game. It's just, I you know, Mage Knight, of course. Anybody who plays solo games like I do, Mage Knight is kind of the quintessential thing that he put out, and, um, and there's just been nothing like it in, in forever since him. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to keep, you know, putting games out. I think he just got too much. He's enjoying too much success with code names. And he keeps putting all these crazy variations of code names. Harry Potter, Disney, <clears throat> stop it! <laughs> Give me another Mage Knight. So now to get into the more meaty games, the solo games that I was particularly enjoying. That is Teody Wakan. I busted it out, played it again. That is not an easy one to relearn, by the way. That, uh, in, in contrast, and I talked a ton about that game in, in past shows, Renegade, which was another of my best of 2018. I played that two times, and a deeper game, a heavier game, I would say, but easier to relearn. So, kind of an interesting aspect, I of the, the games and gaming in general that I found interesting. So I figured I'd point out. Then, um, oh, I did play Gloomhaven. I played it once. And, you know, it's getting warmer down here. This is the Pacific Northwest in uh, the U.S. of A. And so I find myself, you know, coming down here in my cold basement a little more often. Uh, but I plan on getting more plays of Gloomhaven in. I just, it's just, one of those games you just kind of keep working out. I've got it set up kind of permanently down here, and I just keep working at it. Damn game, though. I tell you what, if it wasn't so good, it would be gone. And uh, because of the whole space it takes up and the time it takes. Ugh. But the apps are helping out tremendously, and I just happen to have a little bit of spare room down here, and hopefully I'm going to get to it. God, I want to finish that game. Anyway, so 
Oh, I did play Shadow and Crossfire, but that was uh, I got three plays of that in, and that was um, that was multiplayer. But anyway, it's a it's a it's a meaty game, and it can take some time. But you can play it solo, and and a lot of people do play it solo and enjoy it. But I think I would. But it is definitely a game that uh, my family likes to play with me, and so I don't play that one really solo. Three plays of that in. And busted out a couple games of Tricurion. Picked that up basically because of the experience I've been having with Mind Clash games, and that is with Anachrony and then Cerebria. And then this was kind of their first big box game that was a pretty big success. And I knew it was coming. I still know it's coming out with a an official solo variant. And I just am dying to see it come out. And I think it were past. I didn't kickstart it but we're getting past the time when it was supposed to be out and i still don't see it so i don't know i should look more into it and um, i know i looked up and it was supposed to be out sooner than now but now i have the base game so i'm ready and it has the base game has uh a fan-made variant solo variant which i think according to the notes that i read that that david turksy who is doing the solo variant for trickerion is has based his solo variant on and or at least with the help of this fan-made variant so that's very cool so i'm playing the fan-made variant and it's okay but i'm still i'm just looking forward to the to the uh whatever the real thing the professionally designed thing i don't know the david turksy thing because david turksy rocks and so i got three plays of that in but i'm tricky in, but i'm sort of just like, it's off to the side now i might bust it out again but uh but i got some new stuff coming up you'll find out uh zaya so I played Zaya 10 times, and it would have been more. You can actually play that game solo pretty quickly. It takes up a ton of room, gobs of room. But <clears throat> I got the table space for it, and uh, I even got the table space for it, and I have a, I had a game set off to the side, and I had, a, and I had a, another game set off to the right side. No, that's a lie. I had one game set off to the side. It did take up the rest of the game. But... I have uh, enjoyed Zaya. I still plan on playing lots more Zaya. The solo, the official solo variant, and you have to get the expansion to 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 use the uh, to do the play solo, <clears throat> at least officially. The solo variant left something to be desired for me and uh, Embers uh, for uh, Forsaken Star, and but fortunately. There are so many modifications. The, the the fan base for that game is huge and they are very creative and there was and there's this very cool variation that you can play solo that adds um, that has the NBCs kind of leveling up, progressing in just r regularly, which I think is is awesome. And it really kind of I want to say it saved the game for me. The game is fun and I played it multiplayer, but multiplayer takes so freaking long that it's just kind of kills the game for me multiplayer. And it's like all I want to do is play it solo, even though people enjoy playing it. I don't enjoy sitting and watching people play for a half hour between turns. It's um, now granted. Everybody's just getting to know the game, but ah, I, you know, it's just not my thing. Downtime is not my thing. So I like games that, you know, you kind of play together. The turns either you move quickly or you're all doing something at the same time, simultaneously, something. This game doesn't do that. So uh, that's one of its biggest downfalls for me, playing it multiplayer. But it's so much fun to play it multiplayer because you get to see everybody's, you know, story just unfolds and everybody's trying to do different things. You can do so much. It's just a sandbox galaxy creating game. And, uh, but playing it solo is also very satisfying, especially throwing in these, uh, some of these modifications, um, that you can do, uh, that make up for kind of the lackluster solo, official solo variant, in my opinion, anyway. And so that's Zaya. Now let's start getting into some of the surprise, or the surprise. The big surprise for me this past month was playing Root. I played Root eight more times. I think in the last show I was taught, I explained, I busted it out. I got a few plays in as I was trying to figure out, do I want to support this thing on Kickstarter? Because the expansion stuff is coming out. The original uh, Root that came out, came, well, let's see, with the expansion, it had an official solo variant, and it was a bust. It was terrible, and everybody kind of thought it was terrible. But the Vetterbot project came out, which was a fan-made solo variant, and it was, well, I found out it is phenomenal. It is so streamlined. It is uh, about as perfect. I can, I can, well, I have no idea, really. But for an area control game... 
this is a sleek system. And the KS is due later on this year, and they, the designers, are are utilizing, working with the, I don't know if it's a designer or the designer of the BetterBot project to create now, the make it the official solo variant for the game of Root. And I think that was a super wise choice. And I played enough games of it, eight more games of it. I'm terrible at it. It plays quickly, which is very cool. And, and it's not too difficult to learn. And But I know that the strategy is just got to be enormous. And I'm just not familiar enough with the game to, to really, I mean, I just got my ass kicked basically most of the eight times that I played. And, uh, but that's fine. And it was fun and it was easy to run and you can run multiple. So you can play a certain faction. You can run multiple other factions. I ran, uh, two most of the time. So it was basically a three player kind of game, me against them. And, um, it was good. So, uh, so I was pleasantly surprised how good it was. And it was enough to have me back that. I'm looking forward to uh, the official Kickstarter stuff for Root. I still need to pick up an expansion for it, the one right in between these. But anyway, so that was that was, um, that was a good experience. Anyway, let's go into the disappointing thing. And it wasn't really a game. I didn't have a disappointing game. All the games that I played were, were good. I liked them. So a thing that's really just been bothering me lately is when I, when I kickstarted, it's Kickstarter in general. It's just, it's changed. It's changed so much. And I, I felt, you know, I didn't even really feel like I was getting, I, I recently, just this month, kickstarted uh, Anachrony, the, the expansion for that, because <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, it just doesn't matter with, with David Turksey behind the behind the, the scenes. I'm gonna, in Anachrony, holy shit, that game, man. So, solo, just phenomenal. And, but uh, Root, uh, as well, I backed uh, that. Well, I explained that, and and but then on Mars came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, another one, and it was something else. I can't remember what it was, but I looked at on Mars, and I and I looked at the price, and it was like eighty nine dollars, and and I agonized over it, and and I saw when it was coming out, and I just I don't remember having to, and and even these these other two things that I just backed, didn't feel like you know like, well. Well, with Anachrony, I do. I think it looks like, it feels like it's going to be just just crazy, insane value there. And But I don't know that I really felt that way with Root. And then I saw on Mars, and it was just like 89 bucks for that. And I looked at the components, and even with them all upgraded, I kept looking at it. I was like, I'm just waiting for something to unlock to make it like worth it for me. And it said, oh, it's going to MSRP at $129 at $40 more. And I looked at that, and I'm like... No fucking way, you know. I mean, it just it it's it's getting like out of hand, in my opinion. It's just I'm not seeing. What am I trying to say? Scythe, like that was the first game that I didn't kickstart that I regretted, and I even looked back. So I purchased the game. This is years ago now. I purchased the game, but it was kickstarted, and I looked back, and it was like it was like fifty nine dollars to kickstart that, and the shipping wasn't terrible. And and then the, what you got in the game with all the miniatures. I mean, miniatures is kind of one of the biggest things that are that are such a big uh, price point. But it had all these miniatures and fifty nine dollars, and it had a, it said on there it said money back guarantee. It was in, like like that. That is value. That that makes you feel good. And and then all these perks that kind of came with the Kickstarter. And now, I mean, and the first time I got a sense of this was Spirit Island. When Spirit Island with its last expansion came out, I remember seeing that and I was just, I was just pissed off in general. <laughs> you no, know, I just saw it and saw what they're, I don't even know what they were asking. It was obnoxiously high and it was supposed to come out like over a year later. And then all these games, because now, yeah, that's another thing. I'm waiting for Dungeon Alliance and it was supposed to be out in April and now it's not. Again, all everything runs late and everything is getting overpriced and it's and it's starting to irk me. And uh, I started thinking back on the good old days, like like when Mage Knight came out, it was just you walked into your FLGS and this game just, you know, just sings to you from from the shelf. You had no idea what was coming out. No clue. And there it is. And of course, you know, Mage Knight is in the, 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 the history of solo variant games of greatness of all time but there was no kickstarter there was no nothing you just it was there you took your chances and you picked it up and and i mean and what you get for that game for the for the price and and there's so many other games so back to you know i'm ranting here but back to the whole vital lacerda thing and, and the on mars 
just obnoxiously priced. I don't see how those components are even worth $89. You know, much less $129. $129, you can go to Chip Theory Games and you can pick up their monstrous big box uh, Too Many Bones game. Now, if you've ever looked at Chip Theory Games and seen what you get in neoprene mats, I mean, they make fucking scuba gear out of neoprene stuff, I think. And... I mean, you can play this game underwater, and there's chips that are just just clunky and clacky and beautiful, and and the the dice are super high quality. And there's tons of dice, and there's trays. It comes with trays that you can organize everything, and it's $120, $29. It's the same price supposedly as this MSRP for on Mars, and on Mars, it's $89. The shipping like is like crazy high, so it just makes more sense to. For me to just not even have known about the game, I'd rather have just not known about the game and just seen it show up on the shelf and picked it up on the shelf and it's just, uh, and then everything's late. Why are people saying that games are going to come out when they are not going to come out at the time they're saying they're going to come out? And then, you know, just whatever it is, tack on four months, I don't know, and deliver early. Ugh! So that is my little rant and why I am uh, most disappointed, not in the game this month, but just my experience with Kickstarter and seeing kind of the direction it's taking, no likey. But, okay, now on a happier note. <laughs> the MVP of this month is the game that no one is talking about. Nobody cares, but it is. it has the potential of being the best of 2019. It's definitely going to be in the top 10 for me of 2019 as the game I started playing last month. And it is a game that I played a ton this last month, and that is Cerebria. Cerebria is, I don't understand exactly, I feel almost a little weird, sheepish, embarrassed, I don't know, that I like it so much, I don't know why, I don't. it's just because nobody's nobody's saying anything about it, it's a very high rated game, if you look on Board Game Geek, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's 8, I think it's 8.0 or, or something like that, a high rated game, but no one's really talking about it or playing it or anything, and uh, it's a heavy game, it's a 4.29 I think is what I last looked at it, and you got Mage Knight right in the same area, like 4.27, Gaia Project, I think, is 4.3 something. So, you know, you get a sense of, you know, the, the depth and the, the the meatiness of a game that I really that I really enjoy. And that is Cerebria. I've not played it multiplayer. I have no desire to play it multiplayer. Uh, playing it solo is is enough for me. <clears throat> and and my goodness, it is such a beasty fun game. And uh, and it's not, you know. 20 plays. Did I already say how many plays? I played it 20 times. 20 more times have I played Cerebria this month, and it's a 90 plus minute game. So that is, I, I put in some time playing that game. And I have I've played all the you can play different boards on A's and B sides, and then you can you get to you can create the deck that you're gonna play, a 16 card deck that you can play with. You can upgrade that deck to from your mild emotions into your strong emotions. You can, you can, there's so, there's little variations of the game. And if you play basic, the basic game, you still get a ton of game in there and you can play it in about an hour, I would say, maybe a little over. And, and it's a much tighter game, but the full game of Cerebria is a monster. And the thing that I love about it the most, I've come to kind of, I think it's two things. One, I don't have a ton of experience with area control solo games and uh but then root kind of whetted my appetite a little bit and that is a very streamlined area control game this one cerebria has a ton of tiebreakers that you have to kind of get to know and 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 it's really you just gotta just grind through it before you can start really picking up the pace and even when you pick up the pace you're still at a 90 plus minute game so 90 minutes to two hours for this game and i enjoy every little bit of it it is, I think one of the things that I love, and I don't know if it's a mechanic, uh, there's a mechanic for it, but it's like chain reaction or linking, or I just love how you can, on your turn, you can take uh, a, a turn where you just have, you basically have three actions, and now you have a ton of different things you can do with those three actions, but with those three actions, you can, you play, you play this, which gives you this, which allows you to play this, which then allows you to score a little bit here, and as you score on that track, that gives you a bonus, that bonus now opens up this action, and it just all just feeds in on itself into uh, just I mean, very satisfying turns. When you, you pull off a, a good turn, um, I saw a review on this by someone who obviously had not played the game very much at all and said that it was not satisfying, that they felt like they couldn't influence enough the board, that they just got a little chintzy, like a little, uh, like they just sort of, you know, they didn't feel like 
all the all the stuff that they did made it worth it. And that's a bunch of baloney. And because um, I have, you know, playing against Ego, I have turned the board. It's just come and it's just devastated me, just taken over everything I've been trying to do. And in one turn, I can just systematically go through and undo and then <clears throat> and then create a, a revelation that allows me to score it real quick and take advantage of that big turnaround. And it's so incredi incredibly satisfying. This game, mm, can't say enough about it. I highly recommend you you just, you know, maybe checking out, <clears throat> again, maybe just for a few minutes, look at the video that I did at about the 30 minute mark. You can watch a turn, that, and this isn't even one of the most glorious things you can do, but it just, it does show you how different things kind of link together to create in one turn. Uh, just a just a great experience. I love this game, Cerebria. Mind Clash Games just keeps um, impressing me. Tracurion. Consequently, consequently it's it a much easier game for me to wrap my head around than, I mean, maybe I'm just kind of getting used to there because it does, they all have a, there is a similar system. You can tell the designers, you know, nothing like a Yui Rosenberg where like everything kind of feels same samey, but there's definitely an underlying thing that these guys do that Mind Clash does. And, and I'm loving it. And uh, Tracurion though is uh, actually a very heavy game as I can see it on Board Game Geek, but I, I don't really think it's that heavy. Um, the heaviness will come with all the different interactions and stuff as well. But Cerebria, because it, you, in Tracurion you can add on these little things and, and have, um, have little different powers and stuff, but Cerebria just takes it just as a whole new level with trying to learn the system, the game itself, then the solo variant, which is its own rule book. Ugh, it was so worth it. I'm so glad I've invested the time in learning that game. Cerebria is top notch for me. And uh, let's see here. Besides Nemesis, which I know has got a guaranteed spot in the best of 2019, so does Cerebria. Where the chips will fall. And I'll go. We're only four months into the year, and I've only got two guaranteed 2019s. So uh, still lots of room there. And um, so moving on. So before we get into the giveaway part, which I know you're probably quite interested in, <laughs> hope it doesn't disappoint. Anyway, um, I just wanted to, to put a big shout out to the One Player Guild on Board Game Geek. Someone started a thread there, a subscription thread that you can go to uh, that was kind of um, inspired, I guess, by the show, by the idea, by the idea of the most voraciously played game of the month. And you can go there and you can see what a lot of other people are playing and, and what they've been playing most of and their comments on. I think it's awesome. I love that the idea is kind of taking form in, in, in other areas. And I just think it's it's so cool to see what other people are playing. And it helps me to kind of zero in too on what maybe I should be interested in focusing on because there's so many games out there, so little time. Another just an awesome um, tool for us solo tabletop gamers to go to. Check it out. And, uh, and again, thank you for uh, honoring the idea, One Player Guild. And I've got some new games, and uh, I might as well just put that out there. I think that might be another little bit I'll do here is uh, games that I might be getting or that I got. There's at my FLGS, which is Olympic Cards and, Cards and Comics. Jeez, I'm trying to fit all this in real quick. Olympic Cards and Comics here in Olympia, Washington. It is the best game store on the planet. I'm not biased at all. It simply is. It is run by the best owner of such a board game store on the planet. Her name is Gabby Shepard. She is the best. I am not biased at all. It is simple truth. It's a fact. I'm sorry. It's just, it's a fact. I don't care where you are, what planet or world or where you are in the world. I've got the best friendly local game store anywhere. And so now that I'm done ranting about that, I picked up some games. This is, she does a, uh, a two, uh, twice a year sale. And um, I've got, so one thing I picked up, First Martians. Ba -da! That game did not get any love. It was, I guess when it came out, it was, the app didn't run very well. The rule book was terrible. Um, I've since done a lot of, of research on it, read on it. I guess the app's working a lot better. There's there's a different like rule book out there that, that just explains the game a lot better. And uh, I mean, I picked it up for like less than 20 bucks. So, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I got to give it a try and I'm pretty excited to try that. But the biggest thing so far that I've picked up and I'm going back later on this 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 weekend. Oh, oh, you can bet you she's going to do a fire sale where like one game, anything or anything in the store will be 50% off. Oh my gosh. Anyway, 
Uh, and I probably should have saved it for this, but I didn't know if it was going to still have it. Oh, I'm thinking of picking up CO2 second edition. That's that's actually what I'm saving maybe for. Any comments on that? CO2 second edition? That's a Vital Lacerda game. And in honor of not backing on Mars, I, I mean, I still, I know I'll probably like the game. Anyway, I'm thinking of picking that up. But I did pick up. Oh, and if I pick up, I mean, ugh, this is a beastie. The beastie. City of Kings. I'm excited for this one. I got all the goodies, too. I got, um... Boom! And boom! And... Boom! Side quests. Got lots of goodies for that. And, uh, that looks like, sort of looks like, kind of like a Gloomhaven, but that you can, you can play, you can set up and play and put away and have a sense of completion. There's no real persistence to it in, in leveling up your guys and having to keep track of all sorts of stuff and all these things. So I'm looking forward to that. Ooh, gosh, I'm really looking forward to that. I've watched videos. Oh, yeah, Frank, the guy who designed that game, did his own run-throughs, and that has set a new precedence for game. I mean, that's it was humbling watching him do it. He did such an incredible job. Now, granted, he, he designed the game, and he can play it so quickly and so well, but holy shit, what a... I, I felt like like just watching the game just... just it, it washed over me like how to play it so quickly and, and the vibe that you get when you play it. And that was amazing. I mean, I've watched a lot of playthroughs, a lot of tutorials, done my own, you know, and this kind of raised it to a new level. I mean, it's not that everybody's raving about, you know, this guy and his tutorial video, but I would check that out. If you're interested in City of Kings, those are the videos to watch. He does such a fantastic job that it's given me, you know, some inspiration there. So anyway, it's time for the giveaway. Okay, or at least the idea. And I'll actually do the giveaway giveaway part later. But I wanted, I didn't want it to be a game um, because, I don't know, because everybody gives away games and I wanted to, to, you know, maybe you already have the game or, or something. I don't know. I just wanted to do something different. And I really wanted it to be, you know, a real expression of, of gratitude from me. And so bear with me. I hope it's not a total letdown, but this. You know, maybe you've seen it in my shows. It's been on there. I've had coffee cups on it. It's a little coffee cup holder kind of thing. Um, but I made it myself. Made it myself uh, August 31st, 2014. And um, I'd like one of you to have it, I don't, if, if, you'll, if you'll have it. I designed it myself. It's just kind of a cool little, uh, uh, little fiery with some dice in there and some card stuff and some bordery stuff there. Anyway, um, uh, you, they have place called the Painted Plate, and you can go and you can do, you can, you, you do your thing, and then they bake it, and then you come and pick it up in a week or so, and then, um, and they, of course, have plates that you can do, and they have mugs that you can do, and they have, you, you might have seen, I have a bigger one that says Board Game Rants. I was even thinking of doing, doing that one as a giveaway, but I just, I'm afraid it'll break, and I, I'm pretty sure I can package this one up really good so it won't break, and I can ship it anywhere, so, so all I would ask, and, and then, uh, yeah, and I'll, 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 I'll give, I'll sign it here on the back, and um, I'd like to send it to, to one of you. And all I would ask is that uh, is that you just, just comment down below and let me know um, if you remember what, what had you subscribed to the channel. What what was it that just had you, you know, finally boop, hit that there little button. If you can't remember, then maybe, you know, just, just what's your favorite part of, uh, of the show or the channel. Um, I'd love some feedback along those lines, and I'd just love to hear from you in general. I don't think I engage enough with my, my audience. I'd like to do that more, or even on social media. By the way, this is not going to go on social media. I don't want, not that anybody would, maybe in this case, uh, because it's not like a free game. You know, you could put up social media, and you could get a lot of subscribers, maybe from people who just want a free game, but I don't want any of that. I, I want this to go to someone, to a real fan of the show, and uh, so it's only, you're only going to see it here. And so... And that's it. It's not going up anywhere else. Next month, I will do a little drawing of sorts, and I will send it to you know whoever whoever you know is commented down below. I'll draw out of those names, and I'll get it to you. So, um, because I do, I I I I don't say it enough. I appreciate you so much. And yes, you, you, the one viewer who is watching me right now, you could be doing anything else. You could be playing a game. And, uh, but hopefully, here you're learning more about games and, and my enthusiasm for games and. Maybe that pumps you up, or maybe it introduces you to a different game that that you had no idea about, or maybe a game that you were thinking about, but we're unsure. You know, anyway, I just hope it does something for you, 
And, and I so appreciate your, your time because it's just, it's the most valuable thing. And, uh, I still have no, um, real intention or desire to, to put up a Patreon or ask for any money in any way. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. It's just, um, I'm so engrossed in, in having this channel be just exclusively me and mine and what I want to put out when I want to put it out. It, it's, I think it's going to be best for my viewers that way that I don't have any kind of pressure at all to like put up a like, Hey, what would you like to see? You want to see me do this game or that game? I just want to do the games that I want to play when I want to play them with the time that I have because time is the most precious thing we have. And you are giving me that right now. And that is worth way more. Your attention is worth way more than any kind of financial thing you could do to support this channel. My content still, and in my mind, I think I'm going to keep though, is going to remain 100% free. I want people to be able to come to this channel and, and, and pay for no kind of anything having to do with what you're watching. One, because it just might not be that good. And two, um, I don't know. It's just the way I feel right now. So that's, that's, that's my spiel on that. All right, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, please comment or question down below, especially if you're interested in uh, in receiving L cup holder O for coffee or even soda. You know, can cold pop goes on here, condensation rolls on here. It's almost got kind of a little indent. I know it kind of pools in there sometimes and keeps it off your cards, keeps it off your table. A little practicality with this giveaway, eh? And until next time, I'm Board Game Rants. Thank you again for watching. And I'm out. Board game rants here. We'll oh, hey all board game rants here. We'll find you're over there. Oh shit! I don't even have my mic on. Oh, good start.